In this lesson, we'll be delving into some of the details of the properties bar, such as icons, groupings, and flyouts. Before we do that, let's go through a quick refresher of the properties bar. Just to make sure we're all on the same page, let's select the thick particles soft bristle. In a previous lesson, we learned that the properties bar contains the most relevant properties for each brush or tool in Corel Painter. These properties will vary depending on the brush or tool you have selected. When the brush tool is selected, the properties bar can be broken down into sections for universal brush properties, media properties, shape properties, and advanced brush controls. We explored these property groups in a previous lesson, but now let's dive into the significance of their icons. We know from a previous lesson that media properties control the media that comes out of your brush. For instance, the type of paint or how the brush blends. And shape properties control the shape of the brush. That would be properties like the tip of the brush or the brush bristles. The shape of the icons helps to identify which aspect of the brush will be affected by those property flyouts. Icons that are square are media properties. Icons that are round are brush shape properties. Because I have this particle brush selected, I'm able to control media properties for blending and impasto, and shape properties for dab options, dynamic speckle, and gravity particles. So if I wanted to change the shape of the tip of the brush, I can do that with a dab profile in the dab options flyout. I'll explain how dab profiles can affect your brush in a later lesson. We also have the option to add a dab stencil. We're going to come back to dab stencil a little bit later as well but you can start to see dab profile, dab stencil. This is all dab related stuff, and it's all conveniently grouped together in the properties bar. In older versions of Painter, you had to hunt through the brush control panels in the window menu to locate all of the properties for a brush. Eventually, the advanced brush controls panel was added to Painter, which pops up a palette that only shows the most relevant controls for a brush. But this panel still feels cluttered, which can make it difficult to work with the properties. Having relevant brush properties featured in the properties bar makes it much easier to find the property you're looking for. Plus the properties are categorized in flyouts, which allow you to quickly access properties without a lot of clutter on screen. You can simply click on the flyout, change the property, and then the flyout will automatically close once you return to painting. Should you want some of the relevant panels to remain open temporarily, you can use the buttons in the flyout to show and hide them. For example, I can click here to open the dynamic speckle panel, and it will remain on screen until I close it. If you're new to Corel Painter, all of these flyouts, sliders, and properties may feel sort of intimidating. That's why next I'm going to show you how to use tooltips. Tooltips are very handy for discovering how properties work in Painter. If I select a pigment watercolor brush called Runny Grain Reveal, and then click on the dynamic speckle flyout, I can hover over where it says count on the slider. A tooltip appears which says that this property can adjust the number of dynamic speckles, and it shows a visual representation of the effect that property will have depending on which way you move the slider. If we hover over the size property, the tooltip says this property is going to adjust the size of the speckles. By hovering over properties to see what they can do, you don't have to memorize every single property in Corel Painter, because as you may have noticed, there are a lot of ways to control your brushes. For some artists, that might be a good thing while others may feel overwhelmed by the sheer volume of properties. If you're one of those artists who is feeling intimidated by the brush properties, you'll be relieved to know that you don't really need to dabble with the advanced brush properties to enjoy Painter. The default brushes will be more than adequate for most artists. But if you want to get adventurous and create your own brushes, that's where the advanced properties can be quite valuable. For the most part, I don't change many of the advanced brush properties while I'm painting. I might change some of the universal properties like size and grain, but unless I'm creating custom brushes, I don't really tinker with the flyouts and panels. Therefore, I'm not going to cover every single slider and what it can do, because that would just make this course way too long. I'm going to try to be succinct and just focus on the properties that are most relevant to my painting techniques. The tooltips are not confined to the panels and sliders here. They will also show up when you hover over items in the properties bar. If you hover over size, you can see how the size property affects a brush. If you hover over opacity, you can see the effect opacity will have. When in doubt, just hover over a property and you may get a tooltip that guides you in the right direction. If you want even more information about a property, then you can go to the help menu and choose hints. The hints panel suggests relevant information for your currently selected brush or tool. If I switch to a particle brush, 
The Hints panel will explain how to paint with particle brushes. If you scroll down, you can view some of the artwork made with particle brushes. And you can see some examples of how you might utilize the particle properties. To learn more about a particular subject, there is a link in the Hints panel that takes you to the Help Guide. Sometimes you might find that the Hints panel doesn't show you the right subject. For example, if I switch to an artist's oils brush called Dry Grainy, and I want to learn why this brush runs out of paint, the Hints panel is not helpful at all because it's not showing anything specifically about the artist's oils. The solution is to pop open the artist's oils panel and then hover over the properties to view the tooltips. For example, viscosity is the rate at which the brush runs out of paint. So I'm going to set that quite a bit lower. And now if I make a stroke, then my paint lasts a lot longer before it eventually runs out. It was really easy for me to find that feature, even if I didn't know exactly where to look for it, simply by hovering over the brush properties. Remember, you don't have to have all these properties memorized. All you have to remember is to hover over properties or look in the hints panel. So by now, you should have a pretty good idea of what the properties bar can do, how to access all of the relevant controls for a particular type of brush, and how to figure out what properties can do using tooltips or hints.